Hey guys, I've had my Fuji X-T2 for just over a year now. I figured it'd be a good time since all the new camera syndrome has worn off to do a video, a quick review on what I like, what I dislike, and as the as the title says, the good, the bad, the not so ugly. Um, the not so ugly is because there's nothing I really hate about the Fuji film uh, or the X-T2. There's a couple things I really dislike, and um, most of them are not even Fuji. And I'll get with I'll get to that in in just a few moments. Uh, the camera itself, I really like it, even after a year. The, the big reason, the number one, there's a lot of reasons I switched from Fuji. Um, I had Canon, went to Sony for uh, my first mirrorless, the A6300. And the 6300 is a good camera. It renders great uh, pictures, great video. Um, even my old Canon cameras, my T3i, uh, the 5i, SL1. And um, it really comes down to what you like as far as the options maybe the camera gives you or is it fun to take photos with rather than the image quality because really guys I look at some of my old T3i pictures and they're still great and that was we were shooting with the kit lens. Um, composition, lighting um, matters the most. My wife gets some great photo uh, photos just from her cell phone and uh, a new camera isn't going to get you that much more of an improvement. It's mostly if you want a pixel peep or um, you want something new. To me, the move from Sony uh, was a couple things. One, if you watch my video, is Sony ticked me off as far as customer loyalty uh, when they held back the 6500. Two is the, um, the look and the feel and the usability. I got sick of going into menus all the time. And the X-T2, when I seen this, I was like, wow, it reminded me of the old SLR days where I have my, um, uh, my ISO, all my buttons, dials, aperture even on the lens. Everything's external. I don't have to get into this camera in any menu to function it. I turn it on, look at where my settings are, and I can, boom, click away. Um, the other thing that Fuji does a little bit different than others do is instead of having an aperture priority or a shutter priority, is they have these A's <clears throat> in orange. You can set any one ISO, uh, shutter or on your aperture ring and that means it's in auto mode so if I want to run in shutter priority I'd set that to A and I'm at 200 ISO which is the native ISO and this will set my aperture I'm at f11 so without even turning the camera on I know I'm at ISO 200 I'm uh, letting the camera decide what that shutter speed should be and I'm at f11 that's just great. I don't care what anybody says. I wish more camera companies would do it. I don't know why. Um, and you have a compensation button over here if you want to tweak it a little bit. If your 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 picture's a little bit overexposed or underexposed, um, depending on your scene, you can you can tweak it accordingly. Um, but that that is the number one reason I I switched over is I love this camera. It's fun to shoot. Um, I do. It's an, it's a joy every time. The other is the EVF. It's got a brilliant, huge EVF. When you look in this thing, it's it's awesome. It's a year old now. I know other other manufacturers, the Sony A9 and the AR3 are supposed to have great EVFs or electronic viewfinders, but um, it does. It it does a phenomenal job. It's clear. It's 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 very very nice. Um, the uh, one thing. I wish it had, and I knew this when I bought it, obviously, is touch screen and then it flip, flips around. I know the newer uh, Fuji cameras are coming out with the touch screens. Um, I know the, the replacement for the X-T2 will have it, um, but obviously this one does not. I used to love that about my T5i on my Canon. It was really nice if you're doing a video of yourself. It, it, it does, it comes in handy. The build quality of this camera and the lenses are phenomenal. I have uh, a, a few lenses. I have, what is it? I have six Fuji lenses and one Samyang lens. And uh, the lenses, the camera body is very, very high quality. The lenses themselves, they would be up in like the quality of like the Canon L, L glass. So um, the other big thing that drew me to Fuji was their glass, to be honest with you. Um, I like very nice lenses, and although they're expensive, they do um, give you great optics and build quality. So um, even if, if this lens like like $1,000, it would be a 2000 
a dollar lens if it was a full frame. Yes, it would be bigger. Um, and that's what I like about this. It's a nice form factor. Um, I know we compare everything to full frame, at least everybody on YouTube does, and even myself. I have this chip on my shoulder that says, gotta have full frame, gotta have full frame. And Fuji is about the closest to full frame as you can get, in my opinion, with still sticking in into an APS size camera <clears throat> because they don't do full frame. They they do now medium uh, format, but APS-C is, is their bread and butter. They make their high-end professional series lenses in the full frame equivalent um, for this camera. So this is a 50, this is your portrait lens. Great lens, 56, 1.2. Not the fastest focusing lens, but if you're shooting portraits, you don't need a super fast uh, a focus. But this is an equivalent of an 85 millimeter 1.8. And the reason being is because of full frame, your, your depth of field, your out of blurry bokeh isn't the same as, as on a um, APS as it is the full frame. So this would be equivalent. Now it doesn't get you 100% of full frame. Don't, I hate when people mislead. I mean, an 85 is an 85. Uh, you don't get the compression and a couple other things. Um, so I'm not um, trying to mislead you or I hate other people that try to mislead you saying 80, it's a 85 equivalent. It It's as close as equivalent as you're going to get. Um, um, to me, uh, you, you're not going to get the, the, the full frame look uh, because of that compression and a couple other things. And maybe eventually I do add a full frame camera. If Canon adds a um, a full frame mirrorless, I might just get it, but until then, uh, this uh, this camera is is I love it, um, and I like it so much. If if Canon did come out with a mirrorless um, full frame camera, I'm keeping this kit, and I'm just gonna add another one as a compliment. Uh, I've never done that before. I've usually sold my gear. I've had a Canon. I sold on a Canon gear. I had Sony. I sold it, and if I get another one, if it's another Sony but a full frame. Uh, or a Canon full frame mirrorless, I will keep this. I I, I, I love it. I love the system. Um, it's just great. You get a couple things. I'm not gonna go into details like a lot of these videos, but um, you get two card slots, which I, I like. Um, you can write both the same as a duplicate. You can have a, a waterfall effect, or you can do what I'm having a mindset as to do is a raw in one and JPEG the other. So um, you can do that. You, uh, the optical quality I mentioned, it has no anti-alias filter or AA filter. Uh, again, Fuji's always wanting to get the sharpest, highest quality photos that they can give you. And uh, Canon, unfortunately, they've never, um, they've never seen the light on that. Um, the video, it's, it's not as good as Sony, but it's great. It's got 4K at like 25, 24 frames per second. The 4K videos, it's good, very good, uh, great even I'd say. Not quite up to par Sony, but uh, very good. Uh, well, well within the the um, the expectations that I had for it. The autofocus, both in video and uh, stills, is great. Um, depending on the lens, obviously, um, just like any camera brand, if you have an older lens, uh, like the 56, is not gonna grab focus anywhere near as something like a 35 or some of their faster lenses. So that's that's just to be um, uh, considered. The shutter speed, it does 8,000 uh, shutter speed natively. What's cool is you can get into their e-shutter. E-shutter gives you a couple things. You can get um, silent shooting, totally silent shooting. Um, and you can go in, say you're outside, you want to shoot that 56 at 1.2 but you're overexposed. Um, you can get into the uh, electronic. I have mine set for manual plus E, so it automatically switches to uh, mechanical to E. So if I'm at 8,000 and I'm gonna go to higher than that, it's gonna go into my E shutter and I can get to 32,000 by just, you guys see that 32,000? What that's gonna do, it's gonna bring down my ambient uh, light and allow me to shoot at a um, wider open uh, aperture. So um, really cool. A couple of drawbacks to eShutter. One is just like video, if you're doing any kind of panning when you're shooting, you can get rolling shutter, or I should say will, unless you're shooting an A9 by Sony, you will get rolling shutter. Uh, so be be careful of that. But most of us are portraits. Um, you're, you're just gonna be still and it'll be fine. The other is flash photography. You can't do e-shutter with flash, flash photography, so um, make sure you're mechanical for that um, if you want your flash to trigger. 
uh, what else? Um, good 4K video, face tracking. The face tracking does work in 1080 video, it does not work in 4K, probably because of processing speed. But that said, the tracking, the video tracking is good. Um, no problems at all with that. And um, the other big thing that was important to me is the customer loyalty and firmware upgrades. Fuji is like the best out there. They care about their customers, they listen to their customers, and they've had like two major firmware uh, releases, no no added expense to the um, to the consumer, which really changed these cameras. Um, uh, features with uh, time lapsing and multiple exposures, things that other manufacturers would save for a release, like Sony, um, and that, that's one of the reasons why Sony ticked me off and I left them with the 6300. I wanted the 6500 and they held it back in their pocket, waited for us to buy the 6300s and then released it a, like four months later. So uh, I'm not going to digress with that, but again, I wanted to bring it up because that's a customer loyalty. They won't do that on, a, on the Fujifilm side of the house. Um, again, they give you updates. Uh, my camera was overheating in Sony. No. If it overheated in the X-T2, you know they will push up um, a firmware, not only for fixes, but to give you added functionality. Even if they come out with a newer camera, they'll give it to you on the old, which is which is awesome about Fuji. So enough of me um, going nuts about Fuji, 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 how great it is. Um, not everything's perfect, okay guys? Um, I'm gonna give you some examples of what I didn't like. Let's let's talk about it. Um, the eye focus, it's less than stellar. It's not coming from the Sony A6300. I was spoiled. Um, it does have it in here, but it's not very usable. I don't use it often. It does work in the right conditions, but um, I wish it was better. God, I wish it was like Sony. I'd be very, very happy. Um, your app limitations. The, the Sony app was better. The Canon app was better. The Fuji app, eh. Not so great. It's not crazy horrible, but I hate when you're trying to control it. You can only do 720p on video. It's very limiting. Uh, depending on what you have, my my Apple app is better. My Android was 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 skeptical. Depending on which Android device you had used it on, um, it worked or it didn't work. Uh, so the app, not a huge thing, but it is kind of. Um, it is kind of important when you're trying to do video of yourself with it. Uh, the LCD, I kind of mentioned that it doesn't go completely around uh, 360, so you can do a, a self selfie of yourself, uh, selfie of yourself, but uh, no touch screen. Again, I talked about that. And IBIS, it doesn't have in-body stabilization. I wish it had it. Um, uh, the Sony's have it, uh, A6500 has it. It helps if you're trying to do video, which I don't do a lot of video, but it would come in handy if you're using, um, is it a multi-purpose, which I do use on vacation. So if I'm doing video, I'm trying to use the 1855 because it has stabilization in the lenses. Whereas if it had it in the body, I'd be able to use whatever I have on at the time. Um, and if you're doing handheld video, it, unless, unless you want to throw up, um, you need in body stabilization or stabilization of some manner in, in your lens. So that's what I would like to see, but unfortunately it doesn't have it. Um, and I think the newer ones will have some kind of in body stabilization. That's just my, my guess. Uh, the grip. The grip, I wish it was a little bit bigger. Um, it, it does fit my hand. It's comfortable, but it would be more comfortable. And I don't have huge hands. If it was extended, they do have... Um, Extensions you can buy aftermarket, but I don't like to slap that aftermarket stuff on there. So, um, you know, I, I don't do that. The um, short video times, and I know it's probably because of the overheating, the batteries and everything. I wish I could, um, I didn't have a limitation on the record time without the battery grip. Yeah, some people say, well, just buy the battery grip. I'm not a battery grip fan. I've, I've uh, tossed around the idea of doing it. I don't do much videos. I usually shoot video um, for YouTube on my iPhone because I'm usually recording my camera. So I, I haven't bought it and uh, there are a couple times I wish I had it. I, I just wish they'd give us the option to uh, to do it. Um, that's just me. So, uh, Sony does. Yeah, they overheat. But I, I would like to, to squeeze a couple more minutes out of it would be nice. Um, the uh, aftermarket lenses, uh, pretty much lack of or none. 
I did mention I have the Samyang or the Rokinon equivalent, and they are out there. Um, a lot of manual, not a lot, but there are some manual focus lenses. You don't have like the big names like the Sigma and, and the Tamron that have really good lenses out there. Um, it's just not existent for Fuji. You, you, um, you're buying Fuji. If you're buying in the Fuji lineup or the Fuji system, you're buying the, for the Fuji lenses. And um, unfortunately, if you want something on a little bit more of a budget, Fuji's probably not ideally for you because each one of the lenses are going to be anywhere from you know four hundred dollars to like twelve hundred dollars so um not cheap i know when i shot my a6300 i was picking up nice sigma lenses for two to three two to three fifty and no they're not as good as the fuji lenses but they were nice it's it's you know it'd be nice to have a um a cheaper option available especially if somebody doesn't have a ton of money to spend um, you're not going to get that with um, with Fuji. So uh, what else, guys? Um, the other thing is no 120 FPS for 1080. I wish it had it, but it doesn't. It's got, I believe, 60 is the highest. And um, and that's really it. Um, the only thing, I mean, I, I, if this is a newer video. If I would have done this video uh, early on, which I may have done, is the flash now we're seeing more flash systems come up come up, up on the market and um with the godox system and some others so um yeah i'm pretty happy about that uh let's get into the not so ugly this is the the a few items that i hate the most about this camera um one is lightroom lightroom and photoshop does not render raw video raw pictures very well um, the JPEGs coming out of this camera are phenomenal. I can't use Lightroom and any of the Adobe products to get the sharpening like out of the camera. Um, I'll take the JPEGs and I'll work the raw files and a lot of times, really in a lot of cases, I'll go back to the JPEG, do a couple tweaks and use the JPEG. Um, I wish it was different. It's not Fuji's or the X-T 2s problem, but um, hello Fuji, if you gave us a Adobe plugin that whatever magic you're doing inside the camera, I don't care if I have to pay for it, I'd pay for it. I don't want to learn a whole nother pro post-processing uh, software just to buy a camera system. And I'm having to do that. Um, and I'm not a Photoshop Lightroom uh, professional, but I, I know my way around it enough to work through and I don't want to really want to learn something else. Um, I've tried the Iridium plugin or the DNG uh, converter not much better. Um, I'm going to try a Radiant developer once my son gets a new 5K iMac, probably for Christmas. And I'll probably take his old iMac and play around. But I'm a Windows um, PC user, and I don't want to have to make all these uh, uh, hurdles in order to, to get back to where I used to be with Sony and Canon as far as the uh, post-processing goes. So uh, the other thing is um, the video files. Uh, I don't like how Fuji splits into the super small little uh, files. So if I'm shooting on, uh, say, a 10-minute video on 1080, there might be like 10 files I have to stitch together. And it doesn't sound like a big guy, big big deal because you can throw them together pretty easy in post. But if you're doing multiple takes and you're going in and, and changing some things or, or cutting things together, you got to remember where you left your uh, spot off. It's, we don't have those big take take one, take two kind of things, right? So uh, going through the files, it's a pain. Um, Sony didn't do that. I don't think Canon did that. I had one file. I hit the shutter button. I record it. That's one file. Stop it. That's the end of the one file. I don't like how they separate the, the files. It's a pain in my, uh, uh, pain in my neck. So the last thing is... Um, just the APS-C itself. I know I covered that a little bit is, you know, partly since I'm in this category where I like really high-end lenses, uh, <clears throat> I'm always looking to the G Master of Sony and the L series of Canon um, because they attract me more than the camera, believe it or not. And for whatever reason, I'll see some shots on the 85 um you know, of, of the G master. I'm like, wow, it's pops. I know, I know a lot of it has to do with their, their post-processing, but that full frame, the way it's rendering, it's subtle, some small changes. And, um, 
for whatever reason, I think it's that chip on my shoulder that just keeps on telling me uh, full frame, full frame. And I may, if um, the Sony A7R's got some improvements that I've been waiting for a long time. The reason I didn't get the A7R2, um, that was a, a few of the things that they have proved on the version three. It's one of the a few of the reasons why I went with the um, the Fuji XT2 over the full frame. But um, I'm not selling this, guys. I'm gonna if I at least anytime soon. If I if I do go full frame, it'll be to complement this system. So if you're if you're kind of putting that money out, the reason I'm bringing it up is to be honest with you. I mean, some guys say, oh, you don't need it, you don't need it. I don't know if it's because of YouTube or um, you know my coworkers that shoot full frame. I always got this full frame. I'm always looking up to full frame. As much money as I have in here invested. Um, I could have went full frame, uh, and I knew that when I got it, I was going to go to the A7R2. I looked at some of their lenses; they are more money. Uh, I wouldn't be able to get every focal length, but um, I would be able to get into that full frame market for this price. And uh, I just wanted to put that on your top of your mind in case you're debating on APS-C or full frame. Um, it's something to really think about. Um, and I'm fortunately luxury. I'm at the luxury of to be able to do both. I'm, I want this route, uh, and the reason I want this route is because I'll probably go both. I'll, I'll probably have an APS-C line of cameras, and a um, and a full frame, depending on what I'm shooting. I can switch back and forth. Uh, fortunately, I make enough money to to spend and and do both. But I I get not everybody can do that. And I the reason I'm bringing that up is if you really want to go full frame. Um, you probably shouldn't be looking at the Fuji system because obviously you can't use your, your lenses on a full frame camera. So if that's important to you or if you ever think it's going to be important to you, if you're even debating on going full frame, uh, I don't recommend it. But if you've gone the full frame and you're trying to <clears throat> go smaller, then uh, I don't think you can go wrong with Fujifilm camera. So if you guys have any specific questions, um, again, this video isn't to get into any little crazy details. It's just to do a high level, <clears throat> what I thought about the system over a year later. Uh, do I still love it? Uh, what are the things I don't like about it? I think I covered that. So if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to leave them and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.